Hello, this is Ronnie Odom with Navigate Housing. Thank you so much for joining us for another Wednesday's Wisdom. Today I'm going to talk about zero-income families. Now we all feel a certain way about zero-income families and there really isn't a lot of guidance from HUD about how to handle this situation. So I'm going to just speak to you as an industry person who's been in affordable housing for over 30 years and I've been to hundreds of housing authorities doing audits and, consume, and um, consulting type work. So this is just based on what I've seen in, over the past three decades. The first thing I'd like to tell you is change your attitude about a zero income family. Let's not blanket everyone. Um, you know, we often think that that person has to be lying. There's no way you can live on zero income. Um, so they're hiding something. Well, I would submit to you that, first of all, that is probably true about some of them, but definitely not true about all of them. And what would happen if you change your attitude and went into it with, let's be a partner instead of let's be the police? And so if you are a partner with this family, you can certainly share with them where maybe some local jobs are, are at. Um, and that information you can probably get from your family self-sufficiency case workers. Um, you can share with them the benefits of family self-sufficiency because these people would be really good candidates for that program. They will get a little bit more hand-holding from a um, family self-sufficiency case worker. And they can develop um, escrow. You know, escrow is developed when you have an increase in earnings, so they would be perfect candidates for family self-sufficiency. In a lot of cases, they would qualify for earned income disallowance. So especially on the public housing side, um, you know, the um, EID would almost negate working the salaries that they, that they made on their rent. So why don't you calculate their rent and tell them if you go to work and become a part of EID, then um, I'm qualified for EID, then you won't be affected by working. So let's use some of the um, programmatic benefits to sort of help people to go to work. The other thing that's really important is that you start with a very good application. Your application needs to really list all different types of um, income and have them actually check off like a checklist, yes or no, on each and every one so that you have it in writing. Um, you can have them initial at the bottom, but you have something in writing if they were committing fraud that would be in their handwriting and initial or signed off by them that, um, that the information they provided was fraudulent. And then you need to review that application. Actually, I would say renew that application on a periodic basis. And what I mean by that is you need to then call that family in every month or every 90 days. Now, some of you won't have time to do that, but what you could do is actually call them in, have them fill out an application, a new application on a monthly basis, and then you could call them in after you reviewed that application to see what the differences were, um, and that would take up a little less of your time, especially small housing authorities that don't have, you know, but one person working the program. Something else that you can do is make sure that you verify even the zeros. So if it's a family that you think would otherwise be qualified for welfare, for instance, and they say, no, I'm not receiving welfare, you can still verify with welfare that they're actually not receiving it. So I hope that this has been very helpful to you today. Zero incomes, man, that is just such a hard subject, but I know you can do it and you can do it in a way that it's going to be beneficial to everyone. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you for joining me.